My, my, this is different now, isn't it? Earlier on in the game, we had seen little taste of the scale of the world that we'd be experiencing. Calm is a relatively large town. Sprawling, you can wander down the streets and all that. As opposed to the towns in Final Fantasy VII Remake, or the original Final Fantasy, which were much smaller. In the original game, they tended to be one screen with the different buildings you could wander into. In the remake, you're inside of Midgar, so a lot of the towns were these smaller places, but it was, for the most part, just narrow hallways that you could, hallways and corridors that you would wander down, and then that's where all the buildings and stuff were. And earlier on in this game, you had, like, during the Nibelheim flashback, as you're traveling between Nibelheim itself and the Mako reactor, you would have this long passageway, mostly, that you would travel down. Now, it wasn't all that wide, but it was pretty long. It did kind of show off the fact that the game could uh, stream larger environments without having to get caught up in loading tunnels. Now, we're looking at something very different. This environment is massive, and it dwarfs the scale of the environments that you see in Final Fantasy 16. In that game, it tends to have smaller areas interconnected with each other, and it tends not to open up that wide, giving you a sort of impression of a bit of an open world, but the illusion is shattered if you're paying any attention to it. Now this, on the other hand, this is a completely different thing. This area is big, it is wide, it is seamless, and it just seems to keep going. And I mean, that all out there is just a boundary, just second de set decoration. But everything in this direction, yeah, this is real places that you could go to. And like Tom and all that is even interconnected with this. It's big. And this has got to be the reason why we did not see this on the PlayStation 4. Because this game, I mean, you'd think that they'd still want to release a PS4 version of this, considering that the previous game in the series was a PS4 game. But the environment is just so big. You know, of course, you can make big environments on a PS4 or a PS3 or even a PS2. You just have to be willing to design the environments around the limitations of the console. Now, for the PlayStation 4, you would... You only have 8 gigabytes of memory, and you have a limited speed, very limited speed hard disk to stream assets off of. The PlayStation 5, however, has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a much, much faster solid state drive, which you can just pull assets off at a higher speed, and well, you can populate the environment without having to worry so much about like loading tunnels or slowing the player down. So we have this big environment. Now, the Final Fantasy games used to have a world map that you would travel to and your character would wander around on to enter in different towns and all that kind of stuff. You know, Final Fantasy 1 all the way up through Final Fantasy 9 had these. Then when you got to 10 and the developers sort of switched their focus on the way that this kind of the visual presentation of everything, they eliminated the world map and just had like sort of fast travel points that you would go to, in a sense, to these different hub worlds that that you play at. Now, this game seems to have dispensed, dispensed even with that kind of overworld and has just created these big, sprawling environments for your characters to wander around on. And they were doing a pretty good job of making it feel like the world is even bigger than it actually is. Because... It, in the original, you would have the world map, and you'd have Ham outside of Midgar. Now, playing on the game field, you could look at Midgar all the way from Kham, and it doesn't really feel like it's all that far away, because you're wandering around on the world map. But the world map is sort of like a compressed version of the way the world is actually supposed to be. So Cloud runs along the world map for a few seconds to get from town to town. You may think of that as like, oh, well, it only took me a few seconds, but you could... If you, I think you're meant to take the impression away from that, that, yeah, these towns are a few days away from each other, or at least a few hours. So the world map was just sort of like a compressed version of the world. Now this, they don't have that, so everything has to actually be pretty you big and far away. Folks. It's okay, I'm on your side. Heard you be heading my way. You're safe here, but not for long. By the sound of it, 
Shinra's leaving no stone unturned. Might want to hold up at the old dock out by the swamp. I'd wager Shimmer's forgotten it's even there. Of course, a course a world of that size doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good thing. You have to populate the world with interesting things to see and do. And that seems to have been what they did here. The world is big, but the world is not empty. Since Starfield we're talking about here. You're, there are all sorts of little quests and things to see as you crawl around and it's not so easy to take a straight shot anywhere which is a little bit frustrating because the environment puts a lot of roadblocks in your way and you have to sort of run around pipes and cliffs, follow roads and certain points and all that. But the game does um, set up fast travel points so you can jump between different spots so you don't always have to run everywhere and you do have the chocobos so you can go and uh, ride at a faster pace if you were so inclined so the world is big and there's plenty of stuff to do and look at all of the detail now this is the reason why you couldn't have done something like this quite like this anyway on a playstation 4 because you could have large environments but look how much detail there is in everything Well, well. If it ain't my favorite group of hitchhikers. Oh, fancy meeting you here. Thanks again for the right to calm. Ah, uh, don't mention it. It's the least I could do for two such lovely young ladies. But I do believe I neglected to introduce myself. The name's Bill, and you can count on me for a lift anytime. Except today, that is. Afraid the old buttes pulled up lame. Sorry about that. No biggie. We're enjoying the fresh air. Thanks, though. You, uh, know someplace we can hunker down? Hmm. Hunker down, you say? Oh. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten what it was like to be young and in love. Y'all just head straight that away toward the swamplands. You'll find an abandoned building by the dock. I guarantee no one will bother you there. Final Fantasy XV was an open-ish world game similar to this on the PlayStation 4. And, you know, I don't I don't know how the size of the environments compare to each other. Perhaps the ones in uh, the re uh, in Rebirth are larger. I, I can't say that for sure right now. But looking at the environments, it's de there's definitely a very different appearance to them. And that comes down to the more powerful PlayStation 5. There's much more detail, much more geometry, much more foliage. Everything just feels more populated as opposed to to uh, 15, which placed everything in kind of like an almost a desert-like environment, as well as like grass plains and stuff like that. So there wasn't so much to see. I mean, it was still a good-looking game, but it was limited by the technology that for the console it was created in. Of course, that's always going to be the case. Every game is going to be limited by the technology of the console that it's landing on. But since this is a newer machine, more powerful hardware, faster SSD, they didn't have to worry about the same constraints that they did with 15. So, lots more detail. Of course, the game doesn't quite, I think, look as good as Final Fantasy 16, which is a game that came out a year ago, and it is another console exclusive for the PlayStation 5, so it's built to take advantage of the hardware. And I thought initially that when playing through the demo, that the reason why 16 looked better than Rebirth was because 16 was just like a like a more AAA kind of game, and, and Rebirth was a little bit of a lower budget kind of thing. I don't know if they expected it not to sell as well or whatever, but especially during the Nibelheim flashback, there are parts of that environment that just do not look good. Mostly down to texture resolution around the environment, and some of the animations are a little bit crappy, especially like hopping over things. It looks really strange. And characters like NPCs walking around and running around and stuff. Like Aerith, when we were heading up to the bell tower, she like shoulder checks people on the way up, which looks really weird. 
But I think my, some of that difference in graphical fidelity between this game and 16 comes down to the fact that uh, 16 does have somewhat open environments, but they are all smaller. So more time and detail and attention could be placed into every asset as opposed to this enormous environment, which still looks good, but you know, you have to spread your effort around more to make this place look good, make this place feel alive. So they probably just didn't have the resources to pull it off in terms of manpower. Uh, should we be worried about those things? We're fine. How can you be so sure? Because I've read the field guide. Like any good soldier, local wildlife will only attack while on the hunt or in defense of their territory. Fiends, on the other hand, attack without reason. If they're attacking, what does it matter? It matters if your nose can discern their intent before they attack, as I gather yours can't. <laughs> uh, I would get if they... Well, I guess Tifa has never really lived out in the field either. But I would expect somebody like Aerith to say something like that. We have to worry about those things. I'm talking about a deer. Now, Tifa is from a small town a good distance away from here. But I guess she... I don't know. She she was the, the local guide, so she must have been aware of deer. But I guess since in the years since she's lived in Midgar, I don't know. I, I can't really... <laughs> I can't really um, square that away. <laughs> I would have had Aerith say that. Like, I don't know what that thing is. Do we have to worry about it? Because Aerith has... Although she wasn't born in Midgar. She was born at, like, the Icicle Inn or something like that. But she has, since she was a baby, lived in Midgar. So, she doesn't... She even makes a point when they head out into the wilderness. Like, oh, there's so much green. She's never seen anything like that before. And that's uh, part of her character. So I would have had her say that instead of Tifa. But anyway, here is the swamp that the um, Midgar's Zolom was at. But the, it has a different name in this game. No sign of Shinra. Yeah. Looks like an old Republic landing. Could borrow a boat, make our way across. Then, head on through the mines and keep going till we hit Junon. Sure. Why not? You'd trust these rotting hulks? I mean, we could. Let's not. Then maybe we swim it. This swamp is home to the deadly Midgard Swarmer. Beware. But even if you're slow, you can rent a chocobo. We'll see you safely past being nothing if not fast. So just give Bill the word and he'll pick you out. A bird! <laughs> well, can we rent some birds? Can we? <laughs> so it's been a few years since I played Remake. Now, it came out, I think, four years ago. Played through it when it came out. And then I played through it partially again when the PC release happened later. But it's been, what, like at least a year or two since I even loaded the game up. So I can't say for sure. <laughs> but, um... Does it look like Tifa's boobs are bigger in this game? You know, just the impression that I'm having. Of course, that was her character design in the original game, so you can't really fault him for doing that. But just, it, maybe I'm just imagining that. <laughs> 